we call them the embodiment of yin yang, of humbleness and charisma. The power duo that conquered playlists, dance floors, and of course our hearts. Um, the boys themselves, Ronnie Group. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, I think we will get into who you are and, uh, uh, I, I mean, tell your story. Uh, but at first, uh, maybe let's uh, present what we're doing here. Um, I'm Ben, the creator of Techno Team and the founder of uh, Prurvu. Um, big fan of these two. Super excited uh, to have you here. Um, enjoyed your sets and your music live and in my earphones for, uh, I think, a couple of years now. Uh, also enjoyed uh, playing it and uh, have been really enjoying uh, just watching, observing your uh, journey and your development in the last in the last years. And uh, yeah, so we we came to a kind of a relationship uh, together, and we're honored to have you as also as our resident artists and just close friends. So we decided to sit down and uh, talk and maybe tell your story or, or let you tell your story and maybe let uh, the people, the observers, your fans uh, um, have a glimpse at that, uh, at that history or at your ideas behind it. And uh, yeah, let's see <laughs> how this talk goes. So uh, yeah, welcome to uh, Pruvu Artist Talks and... Um, yeah, first questions. Uh, who are you? <laughs> so we need to do our famous introductions. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm Ron. And I'm Ori. And uh, together, uh, Ronnie Ron Group. <laughs> so uh, Ori and uh, Ron is uh, combined as Ronnie. Uh, very verbal. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, maybe first question. When, when did you guys meet? When did you start the duo? And it was... Uh, I think it was like a holiday and we met in like a big underground uh, uh, party. They were all really like uh, costumed up and I met him. I think both of us were not costume and oh, we yeah, a, a, yeah. a common friend and like we, we just met on, on a staircase just like in this building. And the outsider, yeah. So you were the outsiders at that time? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I guess cool. so. Uh, so you just you just met, uh, started talking. Uh, so Actually, no. Minron um, didn't have had any connections besides a couple of mutual friends. Yeah. yeah. But Ron I did a party with a good friend of mine. That it turns that turns out that both of them are best friends. Okay. So yeah. they did a party. They took me to play. They booked me. It was one of my um, really first appearance. And um, after that, Minron just I don't know um, text. Let's have a coffee or something. Let's have a you know. Yeah, and like through time, like we started working out, like working together, and uh, uh, making music just for fun. But let's. Uh, but but like when COVID uh, yeah. started, um, uh, we set up a pizza place at, at two a.m. in the morning. It pizza and thought to ourselves, I have a studio in my home because I was a drum player. One have big speaker that I, I couldn't afford. <laughs> so yeah. why were you? It was a match. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we just like went the, uh, the morning after to uh, IKEA, uh, bought like a big uh, table. Uh, table. And set like, up the place. Yeah, set it up like in his place. Put uh, like took the speakers from my place to his, and that's it. Nice. We have a studio. And put the pieces to the puzzle. Cool. So uh, yeah, let's uh, jump a little bit more to the past. What, what is your like uh, background to music in in general, uh, Ron? Um, you, you start? I started um, playing piano when I was five or six. Um, it was like my, my parents like told me it's good for your brain, it's, it's good for everything and you should, uh, you should do it. I, I didn't really like it at first, but uh, through time it just, I, I don't know, like it, it was always like a thing in my life that I, I have my life and then I have music and it's sort of like it's heals. Mm -hmm. um, it was always like also about hearing music and about uh, uh, like going to concerts uh, as a kid. Like I, I always went like to the biggest uh, uh, concerts in Park Uh huh. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and uh, I don't know. It just felt like really right when I was. Uh, Who were your uh, like uh, first uh, big bands, big names that uh, kind of driven your childhood, like posters on your walls or something like that? 
Um, I guess like uh, Coldplay, Amy nice. Winehouse. <laughs> um, yeah, I have like the most basic. Uh, We all do. Well, I, I don't think there's anybody that you know not really likes pop music. Yeah. You know? yeah. If it's if it's popular, I think it's just matching all our ears. Yeah. So yeah. Growing up, I liked more like. Uh, Uh, trap and hip hop. I, I really liked uh, Nicki Minaj and uh, all like those girly uh, <laughs> trash rap. Yeah, yeah. I, I used to love it. I still love it. Nice. Like whenever I'm feeling down, I I, pop, I turn it up like really, really loud at home. Nice. And it's fun again. Nice. And Ollie is a little bit harder. Uh, yeah, right? I'm Here. the opposite. <laughs> so um, I said yin and yang. <laughs> yeah. So um, I just remember that when I was in third grade, I had a music uh, music uh, lesson in school. And then I started to play drums at the age of nine. Then I got a guitar hero, I saw Slash, and immediately I started to learn guitar also. And my favorite one are Guns N' Roses, like the first on the list. Um, and always wanted to have a band, you know, that having a tour and get fucked up and stuff. <laughs> Very rocky. Yeah, so now I have this one. <laughs> Sex, drugs and rock and roll. <laughs> Nice. And uh, actually, that's why I love being in a group, duo, trio, like, I don't know, um, because when I got, uh, when I watched all those bands when I was young, that was the dream, mm. to travel with some, someone mm -hmm. uh, across the globe, just nice. doing a lot of big shows, that's <laughs> the dream. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, nice. and then I went to a music school and started to play jazz on wow. drums, yeah, but it was a bit hard because I uh, didn't like jazz so much. Just wanted to play metal, punk. So outside the school, I had some bands. We also uh, performed at Barbie in Tel Aviv and also nice. in a festival. It was really great. Um, and uh, yeah, then start clubbing. So what, what was your like uh, punky? Punky yeah. was the direction? Nice, yeah. nice, nice, nice. And you started clubbing like when you were like uh, 17, um, 18? Yeah, actually I hate clubbing. I hate techno. I was a bit a uh, technophobe, you know? just wanted to play drums without any computers around. Uh -huh. And then, I don't know, a friend told me, yeah, there's a party, you should come. I came, and the rest <laughs> is history, you know. Where was it, do you remember? Uh, yeah, of course, Breakfast Club. Breakfast? Yeah. Uh, Classic. <laughs> Classic one. Where was your first party? Alphabet How did you come Club. To? Also Breakfast? Yeah, no, Alphabet Club. Ah, the Alphabet, okay, yeah. also Classic. Like my, si my sister took me, we just uh, moved with, our, uh, with my parents. Uh, to Tel Aviv because our uh, house was under cons uh, construction. Yeah. And um, like it was Friday night and she told me, I'm going, you should come with me. I'm going with friends and like we have a mutual friend, like you should come with us. So your sister baptized you. Yeah. Nice. It was my brother for me as well. So although he's younger. Yeah. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Can I grab nice. a coat uh, really fast? Huh? Can I grab a coat? Yes, of course. Of course. Yeah, yeah take my coat. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but I don't know, like first time I was, uh, I came uh, to the club inside my pouch. I had like five grams of, of uh, weed. It was like just exposed yeah. to everyone to watch. Yeah. And then I came, like she told the, the, the selector, like, get him inside. It's my brother, get him inside. And I, I went like through the security and he opened my bag, saw this and told me like, you have to put it away. Uh, uh, like like put it, put it, yeah, put it in the trash, put it in the trash. And then my sister like, Uh, took it, went away 100 meter, and uh, then like she told me, get inside with my friends. And after 10 minutes, she went inside, and I told her like, did you put it in the trash? What the fuck? Like, yeah. I want to go out. I want to have it. And then like she took it outside of her of her boots. Wow. Here it is. <laughs> Enjoy your party. It's almost like the classical uh, hiding uh, hiding stuff, but uh, upside down. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, yeah, I was I was I was baptized at the block. Actually. Really, really. Yes, yes. We actually played at the last night of the block. Really? Yeah, yeah like for six hours. Oh, wow. Maybe yeah. seven. Yeah. Wow. wow. My first night at the block was uh, amazing. It was my first and last time there, I think. I came, we came to one room and this guy was uh, performing on drums. Really? Yes. On the double gun, maybe? I think, maybe. He was like on like really a drum set, but he also had like some, uh, some other uh, equipment pieces there and it was uh, amazing. Yeah. Uh, it was uh, my first experience with many stuff that night. Yeah. <laughs> Um, it was just funny because I was living in uh, Berlin already for a very long time, but I always uh, stayed away from uh, the, from the darker part of the night. I was like going out and stuff, but uh, not really not really techno. And uh, the block opened me, so uh, yeah, 
totally feel it. So your yours was alphabet. Your was uh, yours were uh, was a breakfast, and uh, um, the party you met was like a friend's party. No, yeah. just like a regular party on, regular on party. Thursday night. Okay, yeah. nice, nice. Didn't know, knew anyone inside or any of the DJs, uh, just my friends. What were your what, what were your thoughts the first night you came? Like you, you came to breakfast, there was like probably something techno-ish playing there, and uh, how was your uh, feeling? I mean, yeah, as the a only drummer, feeling you... I had uh -huh. is from the <laughs> is. <laughs> It was from the MDMA I took in the amount. I can only remember that. Okay. Thing, <laughs> so no like memory of the music or your reaction no, to it. I, I think, think no one know. ever like when when he starts going out gets to feel like the music really I agree, you don't really remember something of the music. It's more like I think I know this track but you never really know. No, or you're like, no. like confused by this track from the yeah, this one I feel really, but you don't really know what track it is. You don't really differentiate this piece of music or other. Yeah. So afterwards, after your first times, uh, you started uh, getting more interested, getting more into the material? Yeah, uh, of course. Uh, yeah. I um, started clubbing and clubbing and clubbing. And after that, you know, we got a bit tired and moved to the producing uh, side, side of, the, of, the, of this um, music. You already knew each other at that time, or or when you met, you already uh, each one of you already. Yeah, like we, we know each. Uh, uh, we knew each other, but never got like yeah. a real introduction between us. Okay. Like we just went always like to the same clubs, and like okay. we were looking at each other and doing like this, but yeah. nothing more. Learning, yeah. Learning. Yeah. Learning. yeah. Yeah. I always remember. I tell I tell it to everyone the story that one time I saw one in Pies on Pie Garden. Yeah. And like he followed me on Instagram, but never said hi in person, and I was like, <laughs> hey. And he didn't reply to me <laughs> at all. I'm say, I'm Hard to get. I was really like distracted from saying hello to, to <laughs> other people or talking to someone. Yeah. Nice. So, um, so you haven't produced, uh, I would say, techno before you met, before you started to doing, doing it together. Like we, we were just started to, to dig inside, like okay. in Ableton, both of us on yeah. his own. Yeah. And when we met, like we knew we liked techno and, and not other genre, but yeah. we didn't know like precisely what we are doing yeah i was uh, all about hard techno you know yep. and uh, also played vinyls nice. and one was about the, the classic techno was yeah, like and stuff. stuff yeah and nice nice so you meet uh, your first sessions in the studio what is uh, what is the talk about what is the what, what was his, inspiring his you his 303 or what was it yeah like, like a tv a tv uh, yeah. one but free i don't know uh, with the touch screen yeah yeah it was so like a, a shitty synth and I don't know, we, you had also a drum machine? A drum machine, yeah. yeah and like, uh, each, uh, a TR. Yeah, you know, I, I, I bought them yeah. when I started to study at Rimon. I don't know, I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm start, studying music production, let's buy some gear. <laughs> 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 and like, the seller gave me the most shitty scenes that he just oh, wanted yeah, to sell. Yeah. yeah. So that's it. <laughs> okay, and uh, you sit down together, you start uh, uh, putting stuff. We start, start working alone. Um, okay. Yeah, like, Ron um, was coming to my house when I was at work and like, the ah, opposite. Okay. And uh, it's a funny story. One time, one was at my place alone. And I don't know why my parents said that he was too loud. And my dad came like downstairs, really angry and pissed, and yelled at Ron. And since then, like my parents uh, didn't let Ron come alone. I don't know. They just needed their privacy. <laughs> and that's why we started like working together because I have to be in the studio. Your parents forced you into this duo. Yeah. Nice. Nice. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what were the inspirations? Uh, you were sitting together, first sessions. Uh, it's tr it's going somewhere. What 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 what, what were you aiming for? Uh, did you kind of said, let's keep it that BPM, let's go in that direction, let's do the groove like that? Like, tell us some uh, some secrets from from the uh, from the. I think at room. that time we didn't even know like what we were doing. Like <laughs> just turning up the machine, looking for something fun. We we're doing a whole lot of like long recordings of the of the synth and the drum uh, patterns like all just loopy 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 like 40 minutes recordings and, and never done anything with it so this was for the start then i think like we just moved a little bit more uh, into working inside the, the box yeah and uh is it this way for you you try to create something that you would feel comfortable dancing to you would feel comfortable listening to you would yeah feel it's yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Uh, um we have this conver conversation like each track we made that um, because we are learning three different tracks, um, they need to have space on each track to combine different ones above it. Again, again, I okay, want like, to understand. 
if you play uh, free, free uh, decks, decks, decks you okay. need to have um, some space uh, on each track so they could combine together. Definitely. Yeah. So, but um, most of the time, those tracks are um, they are really um, I don't know I don't know if say missing something, but like they're really. Um, uh, most of tracks are not optimal to mix. No, like. If you listen to it in home, you'll be probably um, really uh, bored. Okay. But it's good for the for the for the dance floor. Yeah. So like, I want to produce something that I will also uh, it would also be like uh, something that is practical. No, also like nice to hear on headphones, but also sounds good when we mix a lot of tracks together. Yeah, yeah. So something that that is good uh, as solo, but also as a layer. It has to be like a, a really really certain mood, like a yeah. really really small something that you that you can catch and. It has to be really simple and, and simplified also. Nice, uh, nice. But, but, but not like super boring, it has to, to have like a small yes. edge. I think this is what makes good techno or just also in general good music, uh, the a genius simplicity that you can find like the drop of olive oil. You know, you kind of press yeah. a lot of information and uh, wisdom and knowledge, but at the end it's just a simple hook. That is like smart, but also catchy and uh, keeps the people going and like, they also remember something. There's afterwards. tracks that, like, if, you, if we put them above two tracks, it will sound, it will be sound amazing. But yeah. if I listen to it on my headphones, yeah. only this track, it will be really boring. Yeah. So I want, I want to avoid this yes. situation. Yes. Cool. Very nice thought. Yeah, I'm going to listen to some of the tracks now with that thought again. <laughs> cool. Um, what would you consider was uh, maybe your best work till till now? Each one has uh, his own uh, probably opinion, but uh, pick one uh, EP or pick one uh, track that you think this was a. This is a. I know that as an artist, you say you look back and you say, "Oh man, I don't want to even listen to this today. I'm way better," or you know, because it's always developing. It's always like the sound of your soul at the moment. But what do you think was the like the best accomplishment uh, till now that really reflects uh, the sound of Ronnie Group? Maybe Ron first. Um, well, that's like a hard one. I think Goshak was, um, at the time, like if I'll compare it to now, at the time it was yeah. our best um, EP. Yeah. Also made a, it was made really unconscious, but it yeah. turns out really conscious. It also like, it, it was made <laughs> uh, um, after we brought uh, the Sonarworks microphone. It's like a microphone that... Um, it's, it's like... Uh, measuring the uh, yeah rooms. measuring the room and like fix the mix things uh, inside the yeah it's like can reduce or or uh, or, uh, or boost uh, some frequencies, frequencies in the room so we could mix so like, sounds like magic so it, like it a magic, kind of magic so we bought yeah. it and uh, like before it um, we, were, we were working without it and we could even we couldn't even hear the subs in the room because they were too loud and so we didn't increase them we only took them back you know. And we, we didn't do like, um, like, each time we put a track on the CD, we... Uh, we didn't have, a, like, the kick didn't, I yeah, know, punch. punch enough. Okay. So, uh, yeah, yeah, right so after we bought this software, we started to hear what we are really need to hear. What's the name of the software? Uh, sound, sound ID. Sound ID. So, here, yeah, we're going to tag a sound ID and they will hopefully repost like, this. Since we bought this software, our mix was um, really... Uh, Improved yeah. and... Everything Insanely. sounds tighter and, and like it's, it just gets to the point when you want uh, also uh, that, that you hear like the same uh, mix in your car, in your headphones, in your just the regular, I don't know, Bluetooth uh, uh, speaker beside you and also in the studio. Nice. And with this, uh, like with this, we just started uh, feeling that we can trust our ears yeah. more. Nice. And it's important. So Go Shock was the first EP? That was done with sound ID. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Uh, which tracks are on that EP? Uh, Shams. Shams. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go mm -hmm. Shark and uh, and Trim. Trim. Yeah. yeah. Trim. Trim is also on that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Cool. Yeah. It's, I think there was uh, the 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 first EP that that uh, I uh, downloaded and play as well. Mm, yeah. Nice one. Yeah, it was like the first EP that we are really um, satisfying with the results and were really actually happy to play it. You know, for the crowd. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Without, without um, being uh, embarrassed, uh, yeah. without cringing. <laughs> nice. And uh, your latest work? How's the EP called? The latest one that was already released? Skins. Skins. Yeah. 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 Skins. Uh, also lovely sound. Uh, you can really hear your identity inside yeah, really it, and still something it. new. 
we are also really happy with the result on yeah. this EP. Yeah. We feel it's like our sound grew uh, a little more uh, softer in time. It was more... Uh, you think? You think it's, it's softer now than, uh, than it was? Like it's, it's harder in sound, but softer in, in the ideas. Cool. And it's more focused. It's, it's really like... Has uh, more soul. Yes, because we, before we, we, di- we used to do like a lot of sounds. And yeah. And it was really like terrible in mix. And, and this one is really focused, just really nice mix, really nice, uh, uh, like loopy stuff, yeah. um, small ideas, uh, but... I always like to compare uh, production to like um, any other skill of, or, or like uh, mastering. Let, let's say you create something um, physical. Uh, so you have an instrument to create that, like a, a vase or like a, if you sculpt something and you work, you spend a lot of time working on your instruments first in order to create the piece. So if you have like, if you sculpt something, you work on your like scalpel or like your, your knife or something, and you pr- try to make the instrument first uh, the best. So you develop your sound, you try to really uh, figure out how, 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 the, how your, the, the instrument of Ronnie Group works, and then you bring out the tracks, which then uh, sound and identify as you. This is how I uh, see it. Um, You it's have like, something. Yep. It's like you can make a vase, but yeah. you can make a lot of vases, but to find like the perfect shape of a vase, yeah. you have to make the same one many, many times and, and just see like how the angles go and how like all the corners and all the small yeah. details and, and, yeah. and, and, and it's just the same. Yeah. If you want yeah. to. Um, and you have a lot of stuff coming out now soon. Yeah. Yeah. So, Um, I don't want to expose too much, but uh, to tease, I heard some uh, of the tracks and they are absolutely amazing. I even got the Thank chance you. to play uh, two of them and uh, last time at Anomaly was really beautiful. And also I think, uh, I must say from my perspective, that is, is, it's getting more mature. Sorry for like being the old guy, yeah, yeah. but it's getting more mature and uh, kind of not, not sophisticated, but uh, it's sexy, it's maybe heavier, you know, in some points. Uh, there's a little bit of EBM there. It's not only techno, yeah. you know, uh, so kind of uh, break beady and also techno-ish. So I really like this uh, multi genre you're doing because at the end you're doing music. I don't think you define yourself as techno artists, you know. I think you are now a, a part of the techno scene or uh, performing for the techno scene. But I don't think uh, you define yourself uh, only as techno artist, or how do you see it? Like, I, I see myself, I always say I'm, I'm, I'm a musician. Nice, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah same. So you would, you, would, you would like to probably experiment with completely different genres in the, in the future? Probably, yeah, of course. Right? Yeah, techno is not the last, uh, last stop, the last stop yeah. Yeah. for us. Yes. Like we're always trying to uh, like having sessions with uh, singers and also try to do like work for other people we don't always have the time but because we have to be focused on on like on what we're doing but still like it's nice for us to refresh uh once in a while get inspired yeah work with someone from other genres yes totally totally and uh yeah let's uh, let's talk about uh, about berlin what was your first time in berlin when you come here the first Uh, time last year uh, last year yeah in july Yeah. When you had uh, the parade. The parade was your first time in Berlin. Uh, ah, no, no, uh, no, no. Wait, before, uh, probably. Uh, before. I was here three yeah. times uh, before. <laughs> but I was just like too small. I was just a kid with my uh, family. Yeah. Yeah. Understood. I it was, was your first time. Um, at the age of 18, right uh, after I finished my school, before I joined the army, I was with friends. And like each club we went to, I didn't have fun. You know, we've been at the Trezor and Suicide and one more maybe. And like I always just... I don't know, I didn't have fun, didn't yeah. like the music. Yeah. And after I came here at the age of 20, um, after I started to listen to techno and started to, to know a bit. Already after the Breakfast Club? Yeah, of course. Okay. And then uh, the I transition. Got, and then went to Bergen and got really, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You got completely uh, baptized with yeah. the wheel of fire. Uh, cool. So, and your first performance was, uh, was uh, the... Uh, Lafrey the yeah. after, yeah, at Alte Münze, and how, how do you feel, uh, how was your memory from that day? <laughs> I think it was like the most exciting show for us yeah. <laughs> until now, yeah. Also like, I don't know, like the vibe with the crowd and, and it was really like perfect sen- setting. Yeah. And um, also, I don't know, first time is always like the most exciting. Yeah. Definitely, definitely, always a FOMO after that. 
<laughs> cool. And uh, recently you've played, last week you've played at uh, Anima. Yeah. Uh, also good friends of ours. Uh, we, uh, I mean, I heard the party was great. A lot of yeah. our crew people were, were there. We heard the environment, the uh, atmosphere was super. How uh, Were you happy with the set? Yeah, it was yeah. really amazing. Do you feel, did you feel like a difference uh, for you, from, like uh, in the booth, uh, in comparison to your like uh, last uh, time at, uh, at, uh, at the club? the same club mm. i think it was a different floor this time, yeah, yeah right? it was a different yes. floor i think the sound is better on, on, the, x, on, yeah, on the x yeah, yeah. yeah. um I, I just feel now that both of us feel more secure and and yeah. more like when when you start when and 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 you're playing and the crowd is not cheering as fuck and screaming <laughs> at, at first then you are getting i don't know a little uh frustrated because what am i not doing wrong Yes. But after you get like more experience and you and you play more, then you have more confidence and, yeah. and like it's easier to play like this because we can uh, predict what the people are gonna scream for and yeah. and like <laughs> we, when, when when they don't, I'm I'm not uh, scared because I can say okay they're gonna scream in in five minutes. So. <laughs> <laughs> they should be yeah, ready to scream. Yeah, yeah, so like I feel like now we don't have to to communicate as much as as we did before yeah. because we already have our own like figured our own way of playing and, and not to interfere yeah. with each other and also like how to perform and you know it has a lot of aspects of uh, like yeah. to, to play the best, it, uh, training comes with battle and you had some battles in berlin already like suicide oxy yeah. ultimates uh where were anomaly as well and i think more are definitely coming soon uh what would be your uh, like goals for the next year i would say I think um, touring um, outside Berlin <laughs> will be good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. like to to have a debut in in a few other European countries. To explore some countries. more venues. Yeah. Nice. Outside. Yeah, some more European cities, maybe maybe outside of Europe even. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. this is like hopefully, but uh, maybe Georgia. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Nice Georgia, Georgia would be great. Yeah. Out loud, you know. We're uh, always like speaking about uh, Georgia. Maybe yeah. Seoul. Seoul, wow. Seoul, yeah. <laughs> yeah super and, nice and, and idea. Tokyo Martin also. We're talking about Korea and Japan uh, for a long time now. Or especially like the last weeks. There's a growing community there also. Like yeah, Kinky yeah, and techno yeah. and everything. Nice, nice, nice. And uh, what would be the big goal? What do you think? Uh, like big hopes or big targets? What do you place before your eyes? What do you think about? As big as it, as it I, I want to be a cliche and say Belga. <laughs> no, 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 but it's, uh, it's not Belga. It, it's bigger no, than I'm, this, I'm no. kidding. Yeah, of course. Like our dream is, I don't know, to go festivals. Okay. Even There's more than that, we want a brand. Yeah. Okay, we want brand. to, to okay, make okay. a brand. Let's talk about the brand. What is the what is what is the running group? The brand. What do you think? It's still under construction. Definitely. <laughs> always a good brand is always under construction and development. You know. Uh, how do you see it? How do you see it? Uh, I'm uh, this uh, this leads me di directly to a sub question you know we're like in the underground and the techno scene everybody as soon as something sounds commercial something sounds uh, or somebody sounds like he or she is uh, uh, wanting to be successful it sounds like selling out yeah you know? well, I, are you afraid of that moment are you afraid of that moment where you will be maybe too popular for the scene or something like that uh, no 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 good that's good to hear no. like I, I, I think that like Commercial is when someone does something new that actually um, uh, anyone could, could like it, you know, so yeah. it's I not a bad thing. The things that, mo that got really famous are, are not uh, always like the thing that people uh, expected it to be like the most popular, but I don't know how like we got into rock and how we got into jazz at first, like if, yeah. if we can go backwards and backwards. Every time, like a band or a brand got really, really famous, it's because they they had something that no none other that like broke the broke the algorithm, you know. <laughs> something went out of the algorithm, went popular, and then uh, you know, I think the, the scene or the underground is just always afraid that an artist will get lost in success and would start uh, creating bullshit because of uh, success. But I think if you just keep experimenting and if you find your own kind of sound, we always use the like the example of Red Hot Chili Peppers. I think it's a classical uh, example of, of a band that didn't lose its identity over a lot of years and still could replicate success over like 30 years. 
you know, and still has a as a strong brand and uh, didn't lose its identity. And I think this this is something that I would wish for you personally to to create the brand and to keep going, keep keep creating good stuff, not regardless of whether it's successful or not. You know, I think success would just give you more uh, comfort. You know, would give you more. Uh, which is also a danger, yeah, being in a comfort zone. But I think a lot of artists, especially like in Berlin, are living this artist lifestyle, but are still struggling on their daily life basis. And I think this, at the end, it does disturb their uh, quality. Uh, um, you know, if you if you produce every day, but you still have to pay your rent, I don't know how, how it helps your uh, quality of uh, production. It doesn't give you time to go for field recordings. Or, uh, you know, like you know. every year, Min Ron, um, got a, a new subject that distracts us than doing what we need to do. Like uh -huh. there was one time we said, okay, let's move to Berlin next year. Uh -huh. Each of us uh, has to, I don't know, to study something that he could, he could work from home. And then we could also produce things. So Ron went to study uh, code writing. Mm -hmm. I will study um, graphic design. Uh -huh. Each of us hated, really <laughs> yeah. didn't even finish the, I don't know, the study. We didn't even went to like the, the first court, like the first <laughs> test or something. I, yeah. I, I just stopped in the middle. And we were like, shit, it's just distracting us from the main goal. Yeah. And a year later, we, we, um, we formed a new uh, takeout duo because we uh, got a manager that we thought it could make us um, do a lot of money from shows. And then, you know, you also need to... I don't know, to fit this brand and this brand and then you have time for, for yeah. none. You get distracted by uh, classical uh, frameworks uh, where you think this is going to be a shortcut. It's hard work, but this is going to be a shortcut or the classical safe way, you know. I think that an artist, it doesn't matter the genre, it could be a designer, a musician, uh, whatever. I think an artist, in order to be successful, uh, really needs to kind of uh, suicide on his art. You know, you have to like write the brand on your forehead and uh, go all in or it's not going to sell. Nobody's going to believe it, you know. And if you start splitting yourself to, to stuff and say, this is me. And this, okay, maybe you have a couple of brands. Maybe, maybe, uh, what was the name of the Tech House duo? Uh, Again, uh, Rino. Maybe Rino uh, Beroy is, is, is as uh, authentic as uh, Ronnie Group, but uh, I do think that Ron in Ronnie Group you have already something where you have the proof, where you have the feedback, where people tell you, wow, it feels authentic, it feels real, you have a fan base, and uh, if you feel like you want to go uh, tech housey later or um, classical opera, uh, why not? If it feels uh, real for you. Yeah. yeah, it was, I think it was just like a needed phase for us yeah. to produce yeah. something else because yeah. we were already like, I think, three years in, into production, yeah. even before you, you know we started. Time, no. and, and, and you're just, you know, every day the same loop, the same BPM, the same style, and <laughs> you have to, to, like, I don't know, it was really refreshing yeah. although it didn't give us anything at the <laughs> end except for headaches oh, no. and uh, <laughs> except what headaches and i don't know <laughs> like a lot of uh, i don't know hard feelings of uh, when when we had to like shut it down a lesson maybe a lesson yeah, yeah. and also a lesson yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> lesson, you know. um yeah cool 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 it's nice uh, to hear uh, these uh, these uh, thoughts I, I didn't want to get into this subject too much, but uh, again, uh, I mean, who knows you? The, the ones who know you know where you're from, and I think there's nothing to be ashamed of. I'm super proud of also of uh, where I come from. Um, you still plan, of course, when the situation in uh, Tel Aviv will be probably probably better someday. You still plan on uh, keeping developing the community there and keeping developing the brand there, or how do you I, see I it? Think, I think now more than ever, it, I, I don't know, like we haven't, it, it's too uh, soon like to even uh, have like, that we would uh, suggest a plan about it. Yes. But for now, for me, I, I feel that as much as I love uh, Berlin and Europe, yeah. I think I want to like, uh, I don't know how to say, like to, to add something uh, to contribute. Yes. Yeah, like, to the place we came from? Yeah, like to, to, yeah to, the, to contribute to the place we came from. Nice. Like I said, I think last night to Ari that I really want to, uh, come back and when the situation will be over uh, to, to open like a really really nice uh, big club <laughs> and I don't know like to, to make it successful somehow I, I know it's just like big dreams but I'm sharing my head this now fantasy is, with you is it's one totally of my biggest dreams place. yeah yeah I I left with no second thoughts but I always thought about this day this one day where I 
where I come back and just give something back. Just giving something. It doesn't have to be like, hey, I'm coming home, like, uh, you know, with my Berlin experience and stuff like that, but just <laughs> coming, giving back, and trying to... I, I see so much potential there. I see so much beauty there. I see so much talent there. And uh, even before the, the war and everything... You I know saw what, what I can tell you the most? That it's so colorful. You know, Berlin is yeah. so dark. Everyone is so serious in Berlin. It's all about fun and, and laugh, you know, like Pugs party. Yeah. Like, wow, man, you're um, shitting your pants, like, from... from yeah, the, part, like, the, the, the nice parties in Tel Aviv are actually have better atmosphere than here. Yeah, yeah. It, I think, yeah, it has a lot with the mentality and the climate and then the, 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 the whole... It's, it's more colorful. People are I mean, warm. It's so yeah. hot. And They so are colorful. Yeah. Ready. It's authentic and open and you feel, you feel more. You know, um, yeah, I definitely agree. I definitely agree. I've been on super different events in uh, Israel from uh, this rave in uh, Jerusalem under the uh, the West uh, Bank or a uh, Psytrance uh, rave on the like the sand beaches of, uh, you know, next to Ashkelon and uh, totally different atmosphere, totally different music types, but always super colorful, super yeah. real yeah. and... Uh, this is something I would definitely love to work with uh, in the future. And I do think uh, a lot of these um, uh, communities and places uh, uh, show that there is a there is coexisting in uh, in uh, in Israel. There is uh, um, especially places like Haifa, they also have like a lot of techno parties. They have the cabaret club and, so, and stuff like that. Yeah, Haifa is, is a great city. Also, Jerusalem used yeah. to have a lot of waves. Yeah, yeah. 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 Jerusalem is definitely super living. We, we've talked with Noah with our, uh, in, yeah. our, in our previous episode about the scene in Jerusalem, which is like a totally a crazy thing. Like, Jerusalem is a crazy city. But nobody, nobody speaks about Haifa because Haifa is like a super calm uh, uh, place. Yeah. It's coexisting there. And uh, yeah, I think there. It's like the, it it's exists there like in, in such a piece. It's, yeah. it's amazing to see what's happening in Haifa. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Every time I go there, I, I love the city. Yeah. Cool, cool. So in this uh, positive, optimistic uh, vibe, <laughs> let's uh, call it a day. I'm super happy that we had the chance to sit down and talk. Um, and uh, yeah, may we see each other on the dance floor tomorrow, tomorrow morning. And uh, really looking forward uh, to your next releases and shows, and we'll we'll keep following you, and uh, we'll keep uh, telling your story. <laughs> sure. Thanks for asking. <laughs> 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 <laughs>